this video, we'll give an overview of the DevOps tables in the Atlassian Data Lake, and we'll show an example query you can create with your DevOps data. Let's start by clicking Create in the top navigation bar, and then select Chart, and then the Custom Chart option to open the Chart Editor. Now that we're in the Chart Editor, let's make sure that an Atlassian Data Lake connection is selected as our data source for this query. Next, we can open the schema browser and scroll to the DevOps category to see the DevOps tables. The DevOps tables will only appear if your Atlassian Data Lake connection includes Jira software data, and they'll only show data if your DevTools are installed and configured in Jira software. The tables for branch data include the following. The branch table contains the latest information about each branch. The branch association mapping table holds associations between branches and Jira software issues. The branch last commit file table lists information about the files impacted by the latest commit in the branch. It will only hold information for up to 10 files per branch. The tables for build data include the build table, which contains the latest information about each build. The build association mapping table holds associations between builds and Jira software issues. The build history table holds historical information for all previous versions and the latest version of builds. The build history reference table holds historical information that links a build to a commit, branch, and so on. The build reference table has information that links a build to a commit, branch, and so on. The tables for commit data include the commit table, which describes each code commit received by linking your Jira software issues with your DevTool commits from Bitbucket, GitHub, etc. The commit association mapping table contains all associations between code commits and other entities. The commit file table has information about the files affected by the commit as they're received from toolchain integrations like Bitbucket or GitHub. The tables for deployment data include the deployment table, which contains the latest software deployment information received from toolchain integrations, for example, Bitbucket or GitHub. The deployment association mapping table holds associations between the latest version of software deployments and other entities. The deployment history table holds historical information for all previous versions and the latest version of software deployments and other entities. The tables for feature flag data include the feature flag table, which contains the latest information about each feature flag as information is received from your toolchain integration, like LaunchDarkly. The feature flag association mapping table holds associations between feature flags and Jira software issues. The feature flag details table contains the latest additional information for each feature flag. The Feature Flag History table holds historical information for all previous versions and the latest version of Feature Flags. The Feature Flag History Details table lists the historical additional information for each feature flag. The tables for pull request data include the pull request table, which contains the latest information about each pull request. The pull request association mapping table holds associations between pull requests and Jira software issues. 
the pull request history table holds historical information for all previous versions and the latest version of pull requests. The pull request history reviewer table has historical information about a pull request reviewers and their approval statuses. The pull request reviewer table has information about a pull request reviewer and their approval status. Now that we've taken a look at the data within the DevOps tables, let's create an example chart with this data. In this example, let's calculate the cycle time of our successful deployments to our production environment. Cycle time refers to the total time from starting to work on an issue until the work was completed. For the query, let's start by adding the updated at column from the commit table. And we'll change the grouping from day to instead use the minimum aggregation. We'll rename the column to first commit. Next, let's add the updated at column from the deployment table. And we'll change the aggregation to maximum and rename this column last deployment. Next, we'll add the updated at column from the deployment table for a second time and leave this grouped by day. Finally, we can add the issue ID column from the issue table. And we'll update the aggregation to use group instead. These columns will help us calculate the deployment cycle times for each issue. Because we only want to see successful deployments to your production, let's add two filters to our query. For the first query, let's add from the deployment table the environment type column. We'll select the equals filter operator and type production. Next, for our second filter, We'll add the state column from the deployment table, use the equals filter operator, and type successful. Now we can run our query. To start calculating our deployment cycle time, let's add a formula column and use the date difference guided formula. We'll select the first commit column and then we'll select the last deployment column. And we'll choose second as our time unit. Next, we can apply a formula to the date div column and we'll use the divide guided formula. And we will divide this column by 86,400 to turn the seconds into the number of days from the first commit to the last deployment date. Now we can rename our date diff column to cycle time in days. Since the DevOps data is dependent on the information sent to us from our source code management integrations, there can be instances where a deployment date was before the first commit was sent to JIRA. To prevent any of these instances from skewing our cycle time calculation, we'll add a filter step to include only the rows where the cycle time in days column is greater than zero. Then we can hide the issue ID, first commit, and last deployment columns. Finally, we can add a group and aggregate step to get the median cycle time in days for our deployment cycles. To help you start getting insights from your DevOps data, you can also use one of our three DevOps dashboard templates. 
Try them out and let us know what you think by posting in community or opening a support ticket.